Let me just give everybody a quick four factor education on fair use. And here it is from Google's actual website, because they deal with this all the time. And when you look at it, the nature and purpose and character of the work, including whether such use is not profit or educational purposes. So that first test of fair use is, hey, if you're using it educationally, and you want to make a video that is criticism of Star Wars prequels, or how to shoot a shot like this Quentin Tarantino, if it's educational, it's fine. And courts typically focus, I'm reading here from Google, on whether the use is transformative. That is, whether it adds new expression or meaning to the original, or whether it merely copies the original. It's very obvious that this is not transformative. They're just rewriting it. The nature of the copyright... Seems report, pretty transformative to me. I don't think so. What are you talking not at about? All. They're cre- coming out with entirely new content. They're just rewriting it. I, they're not actually adding anything to it. Transformative if a human would did be, it, it'd be fine. If a human does it, it's not. It's if a human rewrites something, on, Jake, it's pretty cool. Listen, Jake, mm. I, I think I, I, think, you I, guys think, I think the rights but, issue. I think the rights issue is just like the cost issue, which is a problem today, maybe, but it's going to get sorted out. But but here, let me finish. New technology nature, waves that are this powerful don't get stymied by either chip costs or legal rights issues. They do by legal They're rights. Gonna get You're going to get wrong. worked out. You're 100% wrong. YouTube got stopped dead in their tracks. And the only way YouTube was, and Napster got stopped dead in the tracks, I predict this is going to get stopped dead in its tracks with YouTube level Napster near-death was experience pure lawsuits. piracy. This is different. And Google was enabled to piracy. And then they had to build tools I to fight against I deeply disagree with Jake Cal. I deeply disagree with I you. Disagree I disagree with both I, you guys. I, I, you guys I both think, think the, that all that cost is going to stand in the way. Let me read you number four. Nothing's going to stay in the way of the AI. No, it's going to stay standing in the way. The, the AI, AI wants to happen. Big companies the using AI happen. to to in, big The AI is already happening. AI is happening. Let's move the conversation forward. I actually I want to tell you my AI experience. I would like to make my point. We Before don't need your pointing. amateur lawyer opinions. I am going to give my point. I don't give a shit if you want it or not. The effect of Are you going to bill us 500 bucks an hour for pretending to be a lawyer sure. on He's TV? The effect He's of the use. Let's look He's at this. Call I've heard IP this point of view before from you. Yeah. Here it is. Okay, take it easy, Mr. Sub. Better call J. Cal. The this is the first time take. you've done this. The effect, listen to this, the effect <laughs> of the use upon the potential market for or value of the copyright work. Uses <laughs> that harm the copyright. Listen to this. Very important. So, when the AI that takes over the world, like Skynet, Jake is going to be like, I thought we'd stop this with rights. <laughs> Listen to this. <laughs> AI is not going to be stopped, but companies using AI to steal content will be. With the rights. effective use, <laughs> uses that harm the original copyright owner's ability to profit from his or her original work by serving as a replacement Jake, for, figure figure it for that work are Season less likely to be fair Season uses. This is out. the one. <laughs> okay, great. Okay. You made your point. <laughs> you made your point, and you may be okay, right. I'm sorry. But do I we think... need to get to Marjorie Taylor Greene <laughs> no, for you to have wanna... a good show? <laughs> sure. No. Let's queue up Marjorie Taylor Greene. No, no, hold on, hold on. How um, much did no, you raise I have, for I have, her? I have, I have something. I have another aspect of the AI thing I want to talk about besides oh, really? just this like interminable rights issue that you're going on and on about. <laughs> right, better call J. Paul. Go. <laughs> so I, I had an interesting, you know, AI experience this week, and I, I think we're all going to start having these stories. Oh, you use like the AI to make we, a script of how to talk to your no, kids? No, every week there'll be some new, like, use case <laughs> that you see that you're kind of blown away by. The, the use case that I saw this past week in a, in a product demo was they were showing me, like, an Excel spreadsheet, like a very complicated Excel spreadsheet modeling a financial asset. And they had a plug-in to a chat GPT type AI and so they just asked it, they typed in, what does this spreadsheet do? And it spit out like a one paragraph explanation of what the spreadsheet did. And it was really good. I mean, because me just eyeballing the spreadsheet, I could not have figured out like instantly what that thing did. It would have taken me like a while to figure it out. It told me, here are the key inputs, here are the key outputs. So that was number one. Then they, they did something, I think, even more interesting, which is they said, give me the formula that tells me when the yield is above 2% and this and that and that. And the chat GPT spat out a formula that was like perfect Excel logic. That was something that, you know, you or I could never figure out, right? You need like a super pro user of Excel to basically know how to do this stuff. So it spit it out and like, boom, it worked instantly. They copy and paste into the spreadsheet and you could basically like the spreadsheet was much more advanced now. So What it got me thinking about is that we're going to have these little assistants everywhere. You combine that power with, say, speech to text, right? Because we could have just talked to it. It would, the speech to text would transcribe the instruction. 
spit it back out. And you're going to have these like little personal digital assistants in applications. I think, you know, it's pretty obvious to see how AI could replace call centers with, you know, having the frontline call center operator be, instead of being a human, it could be like an AI. But this is actually even before that. Like you could actually, I think in every single application that we use, there's going to be an AI interface and like a, it is probably going to be voice-based where you can just say to it, Hey, I'm trying to accomplish this. Like, how do I do it? Can you just make it happen? Totally. And it's going to be really powerful. Actually, I have an idea. I was hanging out with Andre Carpathy and I gave him this following challenge. So there I was. So there I um, was. I said, if you had to build Stripe, I said, how many engineers do you think it would take you and how long would it take you to build a competitor? I was just, just a thought exercise. You know, it would take hundreds of millions of dollars and years. Now, imagine you could, you were feeling threatened by Stripe. Imagine you're a large company. Visa MasterCard, just as an example. You can now actually get one or two really smart people like him to lead an effort where you would say, here's a couple hundred million dollars to compete with Stripe, but here are the boundary conditions. Number one is you can only hire five or 10 engineers. And so what you would do is, is you would actually use tools like this to write the code for you. Hmm. And the ability to write code is going to be the first thing that totally. these guys, that these things do incredibly well with totally. absolute precision. You can already do unit testing incredibly well, but it's gonna go from unit testing to basically end-to-end -end testing. And you'll be able to build a version of Stripe extremely quickly and in a very lean way. So then the question is, well, what would you do with the two or 300 million you raised? And my thought is you use it again as tack. You go Acquire to customers. You go to customers and you're like, well, listen, if Braintree is gonna charge you one basis point over Visa MasterCard and, or sorry, a hundred basis points and Stripe will 50, you know what? I'll charge 10. Margin destruction. Margin destruction. Right. Totally. And, and this is going to make everything. That's what's so interesting. You can take yeah. any business that's a middleman business. I think this is the point. Any middleman business right now that doesn't have its own competitive moat can be competed against. Because yep. now you can take all of those input costs that go into human capital. You can defer that, have a much smaller human capital pool, and push all of that extra money but, into traffic acquisition and substitution. This goes to the, net, the net in benefit. Silicon Valley of being more efficient. This well, is no, going to lead to that the efficiency. The benefit of all of this is economic productivity because the end customer that's using that tool that you just mentioned, they now have a lower cost to run their business and their total net profits go up. And this is what happens with every technology cycle. It always yields greater economic yeah, and, productivity. And, and that's why the economy grows. And that's why I just want to say this is right. so important. That's why technology is so important to drive economic growth, not 